Luca Vorin has been brought up recently by the Trump administration as a potential treatment for autism. Now, that is a huge claim, so naturally, I will be exploring that today and going through what Luca Vorin is, how it's being tied to autism, and also why it might be able to help with some of the symptoms that people with autism experience particularly children. I'll also be going through whether or not any of that is actually backed by research, so let's go. Before we can actually talk about leucovorin, I need to quickly talk about folate, and I promise you this is important. So folate is actually one of the B vitamins. It is also known as vitamin B9. And we need it because it is essential for making DNA, it supports cell growth, and it's needed for the normal development of the nervous system. Which is why women are told to take folic acid both before and during pregnancy, because it's needed for a lot of the growth and development that happens during that time. Now, folic acid, is the synthetic form of folate that you will see in supplements and also in fortified foods. Now, this folic acid here, this needs to be converted in your body to the active form of folate before your cells can actually use it. And what is the active form of folic acid called? It is folinic acid, also known as leucovorin. Leucovorin is the active form of folic acid. And so while folic acid needs to go through several steps to become this active form, leucovorin is already ready to go and be used by the body, which makes it very useful in medicine when something that works fast is needed. And so leucovorin is more commonly used in chemotherapy as a rescue after high dose methotrexate treatment. Now I won't explain the details of all of that, but leucovorin prevents an overdose in these cases. Also, if someone has a folate deficiency and it's quite severe, leucovorin again could be used instead of the usual supplements of folic acid. So what I'm trying to say is it's a pretty niche medication, which is why not many people will have heard of it or have even experienced needing it. So why then is autism being talked about when it comes to leucovorin? Well, what researchers have found is that some children with autism carry something called folate receptor autoantibodies, or FRAA for short. Now, according to the research out there, it's somewhere around 40 to 50%, potentially more, that children with autism have these autoantibodies. Now, these are antibodies, meaning they are part of the immune system, but the word autoantibody is important here because while antibodies usually attack things that are foreign to our bodies, things that don't belong there, autoantibodies attack your body's own parts. And so these folate receptor autoantibodies, they attack the body's own folate receptors, which isn't great. Okay, so I hope you can see my little drawing, but some folate receptors will sit on the lining of the blood vessels in your brain. And these receptors, they act as a gateway. They allow the folate or vitamin B9 to enter into the brain. They allow it to essentially move from the blood into the brain. That's what these receptors do. Then once it's in the brain, the folate can do what it needs to do for making DNA, making neurotransmitters, or be involved with overall brain development. If these receptors get blocked or damaged by those autoantibodies that I mentioned, then folate can't get through, and this can lead to something called cerebral folate deficiency. Cerebral because it is in the brain. There is a folate deficiency in the brain. So why then does all of this matter? Well, folate, like I mentioned, plays a role in how the brain develops and functions throughout childhood in particular. Folate is needed to make neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin, both of which can influence behavior, mood, and communication. What folate also does is support the pathways that your brain uses to grow new connections and process information. So if a child happens to have these folate receptor autoantibodies, 
that stop folate from getting into the brain, then this cerebral folate deficiency can occur. And what's interesting, and I think what has the attention of researchers, is the fact that the symptoms of this deficiency are things like developmental delays, difficulties with speech and language, and difficulties with social interaction. Now, these symptoms are also things that children with autism can experience and display. So that's why there is this idea that if you can get around the folate being blocked and bring folate levels in the brain back to normal, then you may see improvements in some of those areas that autistic children struggle with, such as language and communication. This is what Luca Voren potentially can achieve because it is, like I said, the active form of folate. It's ready to go and it actually uses a different way to get into the brain, which means that those receptors that get blocked, they don't get in the way of leucovorin working. But it is very important to know and understand that this doesn't mean that it is a cure for autism or anything like that. There is no such thing. What it can do is help in those children with autism who happen to have the folate receptor autoantibodies, which could be making their symptoms worse. But is there actually any research to show this all works? Well, there have been some trials. So this was a study from 2018. It was a randomized controlled trial with 48 children who were diagnosed with autism and who had difficulties with language. And so some of these children were given what is considered a higher dose of folinic acid or leucovorin at two milligrams per kilogram per day. And then the others were given a placebo and the trial ran for a 12 week period. What they found was that the folinic acid improved verbal communication in the children more than the placebo did. And the children that had the folate receptor autoantibodies they had the largest improvements. They also noticed less irritability and hyperactivity in the children as well. Now look, it was only 48 children in this study and that isn't a whole lot. Ideally, we would want to see more research with more children and for longer durations so that we can see if these results last and are also safe in the long term. But it is pretty positive so far. Now there has been another similar trial, but this one was based in India. This has slightly more children, but it did use the exact same dosing of folinic acid and it found reductions to the severity of autism in the children who were given the medication. So what we can see from the research is that particularly in children who have those folate receptor autoantibodies, giving leucovorin can seem to improve language difficulties and behavioral symptoms. Again, small and short trials so far, but this early research is strong and I think there's definitely good reason to look into it further. Not every child that has autism will have those antibodies we talk about though, so it's not a blanket treatment that can be used. And because of how complex autism is, it's always going to be on an individual basis whether a child will be able to benefit from something like this or not. Now, it is important to remember that leucovorin or folinic acid is different to the folic acid that you find in supplements or fortified foods. And trying to use those to get these results isn't going to work because the issue is transporting that folic acid from the blood to the brain, which can't happen if someone has these folate receptor autoantibodies. The leucovorin specifically uses a different way to get into the brain and it is also a prescription medication. So I don't make these videos to tell people what they should or shouldn't take. I will always say you need to discuss these things with your doctor and healthcare team because they know your individual situation a hell of a lot better than I do. I make these videos to help you decide whether what is being said in the media is true or not because it's getting a bit hectic out there with misinformation. Now, I didn't know a lot about how leucovorin can be used in children with autism until I had to research and make this video. I honestly learned a whole lot. I didn't expect to find what I did and it was really interesting and it's just a good example of why I like making these videos because I learn so much. So I hope this helped, but if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and I'll do my best. I will see you in the next video though, and until then, keep playing the long game.